Hello and welcome to a rainy day in Northern California. Behind me is a Ford Mustang Mach-E with the latest revised charging curve from Ford. And today we're going to test it out. All right, so let's talk about the Mach-E and charging. So the Mach-E, when it launched, had a very unique charging curve. And a charging curve is basically how much uh, kilowatts the car is going to accept per state of charge. So when it's at a certain state of charge, how much will the car accept uh, to put into the battery? It's pretty complicated, but um, basically this is how long it's going to take you to stay at a charger to charge your car up to a certain battery state of charge. So most cars, when it gets over 80% state of charge um, at a DC fast charger, will taper off a lot. The Mach-E did something that was even more uh, conservative. What the Mach-E did um, was at 80%, it would fall off a uh, charging cliff and go down to basically level two state of charge um, levels that you would see in your garage if you plugged in overnight. And that meant if you needed to go over 80%, say if you were on a road trip, uh, when you needed to use a DC fast charger, you'd be sitting there for another hour and a half probably to go from 80% to 100%. So basically it made absolutely no sense for any road trip to leave it plugged in over 80%, unless you were still eating at a restaurant and you didn't want to pay for idle time at a charger, blah, 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 right? So Ford just did a revised, um, charging curve at the end of last year. I have it flashed onto my car, which is a 2021 uh, GT Performance Edition. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna test out that charging curve from zero to 100%. One hour later. All right, so I am sitting at a 350 stall at Electrify America and hopefully no one's going to kick me out. There's still some other, plenty of other stalls available here, even though it's uh, pretty busy at the mall today. So uh, I've driven the car from 34% state of charge, ripped it up and down some highways, uh, let it regen as well a lot. So it's uh, pretty toasty. My battery uh, temperature is 78 degrees right now, which in my experience is what the Mach-E's battery likes to be at uh, if you uh, precondition uh, set a departure time before leaving. So I think our battery's at optimal temperature uh, where the Mach-E likes it. We're currently at a 2% uh, state of charge sitting here. Um, I am counting on this 350 working. If it doesn't, I think I have enough juice to get across the way to uh, another charger. Famous last words, but I think I can. And uh, we're gonna stay here until uh, we get to 0% to make it a true test. Uh, right now, as you can tell, I'm running uh, the uh, HVAC system on high heat. Uh, the hottest it can be for both uh, passenger and driver. Uh, I also have both seat heaters on high. I have my steering wheel heater on and I also have the rear defroster on. I'm hoping it's not too long because uh, I think I'm toastier than the battery is. All right, so we're plugged in and charging. I want to say two things from the outset that were a little bit suboptimal about this test. The first was that rare for California, it was actually raining when I did this test. And uh, the screen, as you'll see, uh, is uh, super wet. I tried wiping it off, but I wound up with one of the spots that wasn't covered. And so uh, some of the displays aren't as visible as they otherwise would be on camera. But don't worry, I have everything actually logged by the car uh, precisely. So I have a, a spreadsheet of data that is serving the basis for this analysis. The second thing I just want to mention is I wound up with a 150 kilowatt uh, charger instead of a 350 kilowatt charger. Why do you think this is uh, irrelevant at all to us in terms of being suboptimal? It is because actually while the Mach-E uh, is claimed to be 150 kilowatts at its maximum in terms of charge it'll uh, accept, it actually even accepts a little bit higher if you're on a 350 kilowatt um, charger from EA, at least I've seen. I've seen speeds uh, or kilowatts uh, current uh, above uh, 150, like 155, 160. Doesn't last for very long, but it is a little bit higher if you have a 350 kilowatt charger. Um, we're at a 150 and generally with that, you only see uh, amp, uh, kilowatts uh, at uh, 130 to 135. That lasts for um, up to about three minutes and that's what occurred here. As you start to see here, 
Um, we ramp up uh, very quickly uh, to 130 kilowatts uh, within 40 seconds of my plugging in. And then it stays at about 132 um, at a maximum until about uh, 3 minutes and 17 seconds. At, at 3 minutes and 17 seconds at that speed um, or at that uh, current going in, we already have 8.5% uh, state of charge starting from zero. So that's actually pretty good. So you know that within uh, three minutes uh, of plugging in, you're getting 8% more added in uh, at that very low charge state uh, starting with. All right, so that's the first thing. Now let's go, there's a, um, about six other stops we're gonna make on the charge curve and then we'll, uh, we'll finish up with some conclusions here and things to learn. Uh, about charging a Mach-E, and many of these things are actually even relevant to uh, owners of other uh, non-Tesla electric cars. So um, after uh, we get to 8.5% and we're at 132, it starts ramping down to 110%, you'll see here, and that lasts until uh, six minutes in when we're at 14% charge. So uh, at six minutes in, you're already at 14% from zero. Um, it's gonna go down a little bit uh, after that from 110 to about 105, and that lasts another seven minutes uh, until 13 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, and at that point, you're at 29% uh, state of charge. After that, it's starting to ramp down a little bit more, just under 100, and you're at um, 93 kilowatts, and that's gonna last until about 19 minutes and 45 seconds. And at that point, you're gonna be at about 40% state of charge. So even if you unplug there, you have enough to have a meaningful amount of uh, charge to get you where you need to go, and you were plugged in for 20 minutes about. <laughs> You know, as you go a little bit lower there, you'll see uh, after the 93% uh, 93 uh, kilowatts, 
it goes down to a plateau of 75 kilowatts that it draws, uh, the car draws, until uh, uh, about 46 minutes. And that's when you're at 76.5%. After that, about that last 4%, it starts ramping down uh, to its 80% uh, plateau. Now, you know, when it gets to 80% uh, state of charge before the charge curve, that's where you really see this difference, right? So at 80% before, what it would do is go down to like 11 kilowatts and just hang out there uh, for a ridiculous amount of time. It adds on over an hour of uh, extra charge time uh, to get from 80% to 100 under the old charge curve. Now, here's what happens under the new charge curve. They've done a really good thing. So at 80%, it goes down to 45 kilowatts, and it hangs out there until 91.5% state of charge. So from 80 to 91% state of charge, you're getting 45 kilowatts instead of the previous 11. So that's essentially four times uh, the amount of energy that's going into the car to fill up your battery. So at one hour and three minutes, you're at 91% state of charge. So if you need to on a road trip, uh, you know, if the chargers aren't uh, spaced uh, ideally apart, you're going through the desert, you know you're gonna be doing some things when you get to your destination. You wanna have that extra buffer because you have your kids in the car and your wife that rolls her eyes every time you have to deal with something that's an electric car uh, that you wouldn't have to deal with in an ice car. Um, it sometimes makes sense, I'm saying, to go that little extra buffer if you need it. And if you do, uh, you can get up to 91% in about 15 more minutes, uh, that extra 10% if you needed it. Now, after 91%, it tapers off as you see until you get to um, 100%. And that takes an extra 35 minutes. And you'll see uh, in the graph that I'm showing you that it kind of just like tapers off from there uh, gradually. Many secret patties later. All right, so what did we learn in conclusion from this whole charging curve uh, update? We learned, I think, three things. The first is that they've significantly improved charging time if you needed to go uh, between 80 and 100%. Before, from all of the um, uh, videos and other things that I've seen, it took from zero to 100%, two hours and 30 minutes uh, for the Mach-E to fully charge up. And uh, that's really, really long. It makes it impractical and really not worth your time to stay at a charger over 80%. Now it actually changes that calculus because it took one hour and 36 minutes or nearly basically an hour less to charge from zero to 100%. And the time above 80% is what's changed. The time before 80% is about exactly the same. I don't think that they've changed anything with respect to that charging time, uh, but they really did significantly improve things above 80%. In fact, the Mach-E is charging faster above 80% than the new uh, uh, Subaru and Toyota uh, EVs are charging 
under 80% in uh, normal charging situations. So four times faster between 80 and 91% you're getting in terms of charging. So definitely makes it worth your while if you're gonna be on a longish road trip and you wanna have that extra buffer between chargers uh, to go above 80% uh, now where you really wouldn't before. Okay, so that's number one. The second thing is I saw in my data that the uh, amount of usable capacity in the battery has changed. Before the battery capacity in the Mach-E and the extended battery was 88, 88 kilowatt hours. Um, and that was in a 99 uh, kilowatt hour total battery, but only 88 was usable by us in driving and charging your car. Um, now, in uh, the data that I saw, the uh, amount of usable capacity has increased from 88 to a little over 90 um, kilowatt hours. So that extra two kilowatt hours might give you enough uh, to like run it down as much as possible and get it to your next charging stop. So that's the second thing that we learned and I think that was also kind of a good improvement for Ford to continually iterate and improve and uh, unlock more capability in the car as they've learned more about how people are using them and the reliability that they're gonna have and durability they're gonna have over the life of the battery. Okay, the third thing is, and this is I think the most important thing, I've seen so many of my friends and people on the internet making the mistake of charging in the wrong charger and in an inefficient manner uh, without knowing it because, you know, if your only reference point is gas cars, right, where you stick the nozzle in and it doesn't matter if it's like zero, uh, uh, you know, zero percent left in your tank or uh, 80 percent left in your tank, the gasoline goes in at the same rate. And that just doesn't happen. It depends upon the uh, type of pump or uh, charger you're at, uh, the rate of that charger, and also how much you already have in your car. So knowing the charger and knowing the car is actually really important. And at least with respect to the Mach-E, it's actually pretty clear to me that um, it makes no sense to really go to a 50 kilowatt amp charger, or sorry, a 50 yeah, kilowatt charger um, as opposed to going to something over 50 kilowatts. If you can get to a 100 kilowatt uh, charger or more, that's really gonna be what you wanna do because um, the rates that you get uh, up to 80% are all well over 50 uh, kilowatts and you're really leaving time on the table. The amount of time it would take, as an example, to go five or 10 minutes more to an EA station or other one that has 100 kilowatts or more is more than made up uh, by the rapidity uh, or the amount of energy you're going to put in the car much, much faster. All right, long way of saying I hope that this has helped everyone. I'm going to put uh, a link to my spreadsheet below so you can see the raw data. And um, I'm going to come up with some more videos that go into more of my charging experiences on road trips and my tips uh, to make things as stress-free and fun as you go on a road trip. Talk to you later. See you in the next one.